G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, Brandon Toy and his mob of galahs, they've been playing with satellites. Professor Phil sent them a video of an ISRO rocket deploying some satellites, and they've been having a real field day. They think they've caught us all red-handed cheating and being deceptive and all that sort of stuff. Actually, I think they've just misunderstood a few things. So I'm going to go dive into Brandon's videos, because he's made about three or four of them already. I'm sure he's not going to stop yet. And let's see just what he's gotten wrong. When a rocket launches satellites into supposed orbit, are those satellites supposed to fall into the clouds? And if you look closely on the right hand side, you'll see that they are falling directly into the clouds. Now let's slow that down a little and take a closer look. Here you see the coffin shaped satellite go right behind the clouds. Now the one on the right appears to enter a clearing and go right behind the cloud. In this frame we see the light on the furthest right of the satellite just before it enters what appears to be a clearing between clouds and proceeds to disappear into the clouds. Watch closely. Okay, Brandon, so you reckon it goes into the cloud and comes out of the cloud, but how can you tell that apart from, say, the satellite being exactly the same colour as the cloud? You can't, can you? And that's exactly what's happening in the other footage. The satellite is exactly the same shade as the cloud, and it's only a couple of pixels in size. It gets eaten up by the compression and spat out and disappears. This is all you're seeing, mate. Here, let me show you. I'll zoom in on the satellite. I'll use the color picker to pick the color of the satellite from one of those four pixels. And now let me write the alphabet here using exactly that same color. Can you see that H is almost disappeared? You almost can't see it. That's because it's exactly the same color. What do you think the compression algorithm is going to do with two pixels that almost exactly match the color of the background cloud? Do you think it might just remove them? Just to save space, I think you find it's going to do exactly that, Brandon. So it's not going into the clouds, it's being removed by the compression algorithm. How do you guys keep missing these things? I'm not backing down on that at all. No question. This is sharpened and enhanced to show the detail, and you can make out the spots where the satellite appears to go in and out and in and out of the cloud cover. Could it be digital artifacts? Who knows? Oh, Brandon, you can't just keep enhancing, enhancing, and enhancing. You're not CSI Brandon, are you? Come on, mate, every time you enhance or zoom, you're changing the image and sometimes adding information to it that's not there. Now you know this, if you take a regular size image, shrink it right down and then expand it back up again, you're gonna not see what you started with, are you? Now that's what you're trying to do. So just stop it. I'm not backing down on that at all. No question. It's striking how much detail there is in the 576 kilometer ISRO footage on the right and how little detail there is in the Mage 2 38,000 meter footage on the left, especially as seeing that the one on the right is supposedly almost actually more than an order of magnitude higher than the one on the left. I don't know what it could account for this. Maybe there is a difference in the weather between these two days or locations, but it sure is a striking difference. Well, okay, Brandon, you guys think you're cloud experts. Here we go, here's a little quiz. Tell me which clouds were taken from the highest elevation. Is it clouds A, clouds B, cloud C, clouds D, well, 
Maybe it's all of them, because yes, they were all taken from the ISS from the downward pointing live streaming camera. And that scene is about 100 kilometers wide, SE Montreal, I know you'll be interested, because you've got some silly stuff to try and calculate here. Enjoy this beautiful scenery floating by, it's the Nile River and man-made irrigation circles, seen from space. Well, how about that, guys? So these were all taken today on the ISS and as you can see very different cloud patterns and sometimes even in very close proximity to one another. So you guys have really got no idea what you're talking about when you're comparing MAGE2 to the ISRO footage. Absolutely zip. Yeah, call me crazy Brandon but... Hey SC Montreal, you're crazy Brandon. If I was tossing that satellite, right, I would toss it like um, the opposite direction of the clouds. Call me crazy, you know, but that's what I would do. Yeah, if you're putting it in orbit, yeah, that would make sense. Okay, you mob of wannabe tossers, let's see how well you know your rocket science. See the diagram. Okay, here's the ISS and you're outside in your spacesuit and you've got an object and you want to get rid of it and you're going to jettison it. Let it go back down to the ground. Which way are you going to toss it? A, B, or C? A, forward, B, down, or C, backwards? Maybe you better add D, upwards, for um, SE Montreal, because he seems to want to toss upwards. Let's see how good you are at rocket science and orbital mechanics. Look, the thing is, if you toss it up and away from the clouds, as in directly away from the Earth, it's going to go into an elliptical orbit and the next time you're back in this position the satellite's going to be back here again. So all you're doing by tossing it either down or up is you're tossing it from a nice circular orbit assuming the launch vehicle is in a circular orbit all you're doing is making it go into a more elliptical orbit not what you want to do. So guys, have a look what happens when the cosmonauts and the astronauts want to actually toss something off the ISS and deorbit it they throw it out the back. All right, Ike, you have a go. So you can release your ret from the temporary cover and then uh, jettison in the aft and 30 degrees nadir direction. Okay, BRT red is back to my workstation. Got two hands on the cover. Show myself facing aft. Like the radiators, 30 degrees or so down, underneath progress. This view of NASA astronaut Victor Glover as he prepares to jettison the Kolka or Columbus KA band antenna as it is no longer needed. Okay, here we go. Countdown. Three, two, one. Is away. Polka covers jettison. Uh, I'll check. Looks like a suitcase. Looking good. And just watch the way these objects spin with the lighter part and the heavier part. It is a very unearthly motion. Plasma wave experiment unit has been jettisoned and that completes the final task on the uh, timeline for today's spacewalk. The uh, final jettisoning occurring uh, just uh, to the southwest of the coast of Mexico. Over to the EVA ladder and um, we'll do... The uh, trajectory operations officer or ballistics officer here in Mission Control reports four good jettisons all retrograde from the station. So no uh, chance for recontact uh, with the station in the days and weeks ahead as those items uh, orbit the Earth until uh, atmospheric drag pulls them back into the Earth's atmosphere to burn up. They also will pose no issue for uh, the uh, release next Monday of the SpaceX CRS-17 Dragon cargo craft. And when you listen to the ground controller, he points out that it followed a good ballistic trajectory, which means it was going to go into orbit 
degrade and then crash into the atmosphere, burn up on re-entry. That's what they want. A bad jettison means that it will go around the Earth and smash back into the ISS, which is what you do not want. So they've got to get the trajectory of ejection just right. Now I sent this link to Brandon a couple of times already, and he pretty much ignored it. I know why, because this video, even though it's a few minutes long, pretty much debunks everything he's talking about. I'm not backing down on that at all. No question. These two have a white blotch, we'll call it, next to them. Well, the one in the upper left-hand corner, circled in green, doesn't have that white blotch. It's more of a solid black, the color of the satellite when it was released from the rocket. Now in this slowed down version, pay attention and see if you can see the white blotch suddenly appear. So just like the other two had, this third one suddenly gains that white blotch. But what could it be gaining that would give it that look? The only two things I can think of are a parachute or a balloon. An explanation for exactly why two of the satellites are falling into the clouds and another one appears to be deploying a parachute would be fantastic. Now, Brandon, this is the part which really kills your parachute theory. Just watch as the box rolls and tumbles in space. And it blinks on. And it blinks off. Blinks on. And it blinks off. It blinks on. And it blinks off. It blinks on and it kills your parachute theory. It kills it dead. It kills it dead. I'm not backing down on that at all. No question. So how do we know those cloud-busting satellites are actually not being tossed downwards but being tossed out the back? Well, why don't you have a look at the video right at the start? You can see the horizon. And it's only just a little bit down from the horizon. Here, let me draw a big circle of the circle of the Earth, which matches the horizon circle that we see. Pretty close, anyway. And the centre of that circle would be straight down. But what we're seeing is over this side here, so of course it's being tossed towards the rear horizon, not down at all. Sorry, guys. Seems like optics is not the only thing you guys don't understand. Now, that, that looks weird as it is, but here, just for a couple frames, did you see that? You'll see what we are told is the curvature of the earth this looks like this black part a masking of the camera of some type to me this does not look nat natural even for nasa's fakery this looks like all they've done is, is have some kind of rounded cutout that they're blocking it, it, it even looks fish high it looks Absolutely. Like the are distorted backwards and outwards it looks almost like part of a fish eye lens capture not much more, it, or yeah, around a portal true. window. It could be something that's placed over the camera, you're right? Like um, a, portal a, a, cardboard, a cardboard slit. That looks ridiculous, whatever or we're looking at here. Lens. Nothing stopping them from using special lenses. Probably just pareidolia or digital artifacts. Or something. <laughs> anyway, the, are these the clouds that it goes into? Yeah, these the are the clouds. I'm the final know. nail in the coffin with this. Um, which I'm surprised nobody's actually picked up. Oh, Randy, that was a bit of a sick burn. Just as well the others didn't catch on to it. Anyway, they might have the last laugh. You wait to see what comes up next. Is the fact that these satellites, when they release them, they stay in focus the whole time. Now, you'll know that once you've set your camera settings and you've got a, you've got a focus set, so when it's close up to the camera, you can make out all the features on these uh, satellites, but as it goes away, funnily enough, they can see the, uh, the satellites the entire time until they disappear into the clouds. Now that wouldn't happen. The camera wouldn't operate like that. There's no way that it would be able to track those and still have them visible as they are. There's just no way. We miss you so much, mate, because really there's only one ranty and there's only one person who can bring this really in-depth knowledge of optics to the picture. Oh, I crack myself up sometimes. Ranty, have you ever heard of a thing called depth of field? 
you know, you're talking about can't focus real close and far away, but if the camera has a very small aperture, you get a much greater depth of field. But then again, this is basic optics, and as Critical Think says... I've made the accusation in the past that flat earthers don't understand optics. I think this is um, good evidence for that statement. A flat earther could never have invented this, because a flat earther doesn't understand optics. Fuck off, you prick. What a... Oh. <laughs> Look, I had to let that play right through, so you had your automatic response in there. Something else, I don't know if you caught this this week, but I did a comparison between Mr. Sensible's Mage 2 footage and how these clouds look, and I think it's quite telling um, about the altitude of the uh, satellite release, supposed satellite release. On the left is Mage 2. This is at 38,000 meters plus 38,616. These are clouds. This white area, these are clouds that's been 100% verified that those are clouds. We can watch it as it goes all the way up. And we have the weather reports from that day that this balloon was released. 38,000 meters. In the right. I can only repeat that that view here, even for the Mage, is well over 3,000 miles up, not 300. Well, I don't know about that, Jimbo, because you can I mean, watch the... I do know about that. Okay. Uh, you can watch the whole thing as it goes up um, from start to finish. But anyway, on on the right, this is the ISRO uh, C-48 uh, satellite release footage. And this 576 kilometers, so 576,000 meters, uh, like over one magnitude higher, supposedly, much, much higher, you know, 540,000 kilometers higher. And you see so much more detail in these clouds on the right. Uh, it's even more apparent when you watch the video that you're looking at clouds from not that, that far away. I don't know. Well, anyone that says that they aren't clouds, <laughs> you know, I mean, as soon as they admit that they're clouds on the right hand side, you know, it's essentially it's game over then. People have just come out and straight up admitted that, yes, it does look like it comes in the clouds, which is a step forward because usually you can't even get somebody to admit that it looks like what you're trying to say it looks like. You know what I mean? Okay, look, I admit this does look like it's going into the clouds, but that's what is called an optical illusion. Yeah, so that's the, that's the first stage then in them starting to question why would they need to fraudulently put this information out there, put this video out there to say that this is how we're launching these satellites. Definitely step one, Ranty, but what happened to step two to nine? You're already at DEF CON 10 here. It's a conspiracy. You have to do all the other steps first, mate. Yeah, but why is it going down? That's the thing. Yeah, why? No, it's not yeah, falling yeah. into orbit now, is it? I don't know. You know. They've given it velocity. They've given it velocity and they've, they've aimed it down at those clouds. So, at what point is it going to now stop and fall into an orbit? Well, how can it orbit if it's, uh, you know, closer to the ground? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's so much wrong with this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, just... it's surprising none of the Globers have come in to try and answer this. Looking up. Um... Mark Taylor, Brandon, it's already traveling at 17,000 miles per hour. That's an orbit velocity. LOL, that ain't no 17,000 mile going into that cloud. All right, what about, the ve what about the vector, though? Okay, so if it's, if, let's suppose it's traveling at 17. Let's give him that. Let's just say that. What about the vector? Yeah, what about the vector? It's a great question. Uh, so that's the kind of answers that we've been getting, just half-assed attempts to deny or, uh, you know. Okay, guys, well, you seem to want to be able to work with vectors, and I'm sure you have no idea how to do it, so here, let me do it for you. All you really need is a triangle calculator. Now, we know that the rocket is going forward at orbital speeds of 17,500 miles per hour. And those satellites, well, they're not being ejected straight down, but look, We'll give you being ejected straight down because we're that kind. Let's say, assume they're going straight down. They're not, they're going out towards the back, but let's give it to you anyway. 
so down at 90 degrees. And you say they're going really fast. Well, they're not, but we'll give you 100 miles an hour. And they're not that fast, but we'll give you that. So what angle does that make it now? A mere 0.32 of a degree less than what it was traveling. So the new vector, even with it shooting down at 100 miles an hour, is less than half a degree from the rocket. Well, you guys really do not understand orbital mechanics. I reckon you better go off and play some Kerbal Space Program for a while before you can comment any further. I'm not backing down on that at all. No question. Phil, especially, his answers have been kind of ridiculous. And he's been yelling about it. But he hasn't come on to defend it. Uh, and uh, Phil, if you're out there, I'd love to hear from you. You pop in and set us straight on what we're watching here because... Seems like this footage that you provided is <laughs> the best evidence of space fakery that we've had in a long time. And Brandon, you ask why Phil send this footage to you guys? Well, he's having an absolute ball sitting back watching you guys go absolutely gaga over it. All the things that you say and you have absolutely no idea. This is the most fun thing we've had for a long time. Keep it up, guys. We're enjoying it. Well, there you have it. So much fail, so little time. And to wrap it up, I'll leave the final words to Professor Phil. Thanks, mate. Well, hello, Brandon. And a big friendly hello to all your flat earth parishioners. And a huge shout out to Wes Wally, who's deconstructed the footage perfectly for you, as he usually does. And of course makes you all look silly while the rest of us are enjoying some side-splitting laughter. So, Brandon, did you miss the RISAT satellite launch from the very same payload where you can see that the Earth is spherical? You certainly did. I notice how you carefully ignored it. So Brandon, you said you don't know what those objects are that you can see moving in the night sky six times faster than a fighter jet. Well, here's a question for the next show. How come I can predict exactly where a new one will appear in the sky? and no flurf can do it. Do I have a special direct line to God? Well, anyway, Brandon, a giant thank you to you and your flurf peers for the awesome entertainment that you always provide. It's just a few orders of magnitude funnier than a bunch of cats chasing a red laser dot on the wall, but pretty much the same genre. We just love watching you all freak out in a frenzy when we send you stuff like this. And I'll send you another one. Much more remarkable, actually, shortly. Now, Brandon, have a look at this photo. It was taken from Chandrayaan-2 on its 48-day journey to the moon in 2019. So, let's see if you can have some fun with it. Give Wally some more work to do. Cheers. Oh, thanks so much, Professor Phil, for those kind words. Much appreciated. But Phil, I think you're more like the cat. You know, the cat that caught the mouse and he's toying with it? You know, I just love how they lay on the lawn there with the mouse and they roll the other way and let the mouse run away. The mouse thinks he's gotten away with it. And the cat is just waiting because he enjoys the pounce. He wants to pounce just one more time. And often, the cat, he's not even hungry. He's just enjoying the hopeless attempts that the poor mouse makes to escape yet again, and he doesn't get there. But the ending, it's always inevitable. The cat will eat the mouse. Sorry, Brandon, you know it's true. Anyway, back to this rocket. This one's the PSLV C-37, and it was also launched to around 30... It was also launched to around 500 kilometres. Now, among the payload, there was 88 CubeSats. They were all owned by a company called Planet Labs, which is a private Earth imaging company based in San Francisco, California. 
Now, the mothership, it's controlled by gyros and other nice technical bits and pieces, and it's slowly rotating on purpose, so that each satellite is ejected into a slightly different orbit, thus avoiding collisions and spreading them out nicely around the globe. And finally, I'll leave links to the Chandrayaan 2 images in the description below, as always. You poor guys, have fun with them.